Are we live? Hope so. All right, there we go. Cool. So let me do a little bit of marketing um, since since we are live, and um, let's get some more people on this live stream, shall we? All right. Let's see. So I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. My wife is making cookies in the background, so. Uh, if you hear some noise coming from the kitchen, uh, that's what's going on. It's for a good cause. It's, it's going straight to my stomach. So anyway, I might go on pause at some point here, but anyway, let's, let's get this roll in here. And we're live with my live photo editing session of the photo walk I went on today with Mr. Evgeny Robe. So if you want to join in, tune in to my YouTube. See you there. All right, that's there. Let's also add this to Facebook. There's a few monochrome uh, groups that I'm part of on Facebook. So let's pop them in here. All right, I'm going to go on pause for a second. still posting and my wife's using a hand mixer so there's that but about to um come on in just one second all right and we're we're back all right so let's uh let me post this to the like a monochrome user group I'll we'll get started here. And, um, Okay. All right. Let's see. Anybody join? I don't know. We have another concurrent viewer here so far. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So what is going on, guys? Today, I'm going to make sure that my volume is a lot higher than it was last time. Uh, one of the comments was that the volume was very low. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bump it a lot higher to just make sure that, you know, you can hear this well and properly. So... Uh, my name is Vlad, and tonight I'm going to go through a live photo editing session from a photo shoot that I did and a photo walk I did with a good buddy of mine, um, Evgeny Orobi, from San Diego. So this was taken in uh, Coronado, um, which is a little peninsula. I don't want to call it an island because it's technically a peninsula right to, this, uh, to the west of uh, downtown San Diego. So this was tonight. We were supposed to. Uh, he was out. He's he's a pretty popular photographer in the area, and uh, you'll you could check him out at uh, if you just search San Diego landscapes. I'm sure he's going to be one of the first people that pops up. But anyway, so he was out shooting um, what was or what would have been a rainbow tonight. We had uh, an awesome and pretty powerful storm system move through, which is which is pretty rare. Um, I guess less rare nowadays or this time of the year in San Diego, but we got really blessed with some awesome clouds and I took my 
beautiful Leica M monochrome. This is the M9 version, right? So the original M9 monochrome uh, with my 50 millimeter Sumula, uh, Sumicron lens. So this is the version three Sumicron and the red filter. I am recording this on OBS and we got the GoPro here. So hi, uh, I'm gonna just do the side profile um, while, while I work, you can see me kind of working here. So. I, I want to stay as little of a distraction from the actual editing going on on the screen. And as you can see, we have Capture One Pro. This is Capture One Pro 21. So we're going to go through. Uh, I quickly took a look at these photos. Uh, I didn't delete any. Uh, I'm going to go through and I, I figure we just go through the, the process of culling and uh, going through some edits on uh, using Capture One Pro. What's awesome for you is that I have um, a camera here that has been loved and well loved uh, and the sensor is pretty dusty and you'll see I mean you could probably tell right away if I zoom in here uh, there, there's a few there's a few spots uh, there's a few spots that we need to handle here so um, you'll get a chance to see me go through how I edit on Capture One Pro how I think about the photos what I was thinking about and I have a little blog actually that I put together of the behind the scenes with the actual uh, camera mounted on top of the GoPro so um, it's a little bit different than the first one I did. I like the first one, um, but I, I reached out to a few friends and asked for uh, recommendations on how I can make it better the second go around. So I would like to uh, put those in place for, for the final edit of that, which is uh, coming soon. So by coming soon, I need to get to it. So we'll see when that happens. Also, um, last time I did the live stream, um, the, the mic volume was apparently too low, or at least a few people let me know that it was just too low for them. So I hopefully I'm blasting it this time. I, I don't want to peak here, um, but hopefully it's loud enough, at least a lot louder than last time. And you can hear this okay. So I just want to make sure there's, okay, cool. Nothing in the chat. Great. So let's get started. Um, so I have here, uh, a f I think 36, 36 images. Um, that was not planned. So, um, I, I just have 36 images that I ended up taking while, while on the walk, uh, with Ev and it's more, it was less of a hike or walk and more of a trek to the beach actually at the climb down some rocks which I'll show you in a second um, so this is at about four o'clock today 4 15 ish in San Diego so right before um, right around golden hour uh, we, we, we got in right before uh, the sunset here and um, some of the light was pretty amazing and you'll see it changing throughout so what I what I like to do first is before I start any editing of any photos I kind of want to see how we did and like I said, I, I already took a, a look at the, the photos here, but what I'm gonna do is just go through them and, and start deleting ones that I really don't think are gonna be keepers or ones that I, I'm not gonna even bother editing. So uh, right off the bat, I do like the shot. I really like the reflections um, that were coming off the water. It was really, really nice and smooth. Um, I don't, I saw this shot, we have the plane coming through, but I was using the shot more as a focus check um, and, and an exposure check. So, and I wasn't paying attention to be honest with you. This is, I, I hiked down to the beach in this photo and uh, I was literally basically hugging a rock <laughs> and um, I had the camera in front. So I wasn't really shooting that clearly through, through the viewfinder. And I didn't realize I was off and I was just making sure that my exposure um, was was where I wanted it to be, which is in this case obvious is not, it's a little low. Um, and for those of you who own Leica monochromes, you'll know that the M monochrome, at least the original one, um, is pretty susceptible to blowing out highlights. So what I, these are purposely underexposed, right? So anybody watching this that doesn't own this type of camera, just know that you cannot recover highlights as effectively um, as a normal camera with an RGB filter array. And by not as well, I mean not at all. It's non-existent. If you blow a highlight, it's gone. So you'll see um, none of these photos, uh, I mean, very few have exposure warnings where in obvious areas where they were always gonna be blown, but very little of the usable frame will have that exposure warning um, because I try to underexpose on purpose. It's pretty good. It's not the best in terms of dynamic range when you're pulling the shadows up. I've noticed that it's it's lacking now that I've shot with this for about a month. Um, it does, you know, 
lack in that department compared to other CCD sensors or X-Trans sensors that I've used. So I, I'm, I have a Fuji X-T3, that's my main camera on top of my computer here um, that I use when I do zooms or just record more professional looking video, especially straight on. Not that I've been doing a lot of that lately, um, but and I've and I got it the Fuji system through the X Pro Two, and previous to this I had a Nikon D810, so I'm used to that level of you know dynamic range, which is about 14, 14 and a half stops. That camera was amazing, um, but again I was looking for something different. Went to the Fuji system, uh, Fuji colors are amazing, um, and then I ended up going to the Leica store like an idiot holding uh, a 246 in my hand and it was all downhill from there. So long story short, uh, coming back to this, that's why you know you need to shoot a certain way with a monochrome censored camera um, because if you blow a highlight, it's gone. So um, that's why. So I'm not going to keep this photo. I'm going to delete. So I'm just pressing the delete key. Uh, I'm not sure how I can in the future perhaps add uh, what key I'm actually pressing. I, I I'll, I'll look to see if there's a way to do that easily with OBS so you can actually see if I use a short key. For now though, I'm going to try to limit my use of shortcuts and if I do, I'm going to say, okay, this is what I'm doing. So if things change on the screen, you're like, what just happened? What did you just do? So I just hit the delete key. So I'm just calling through. I'm just going to delete. I like this. Um, I like the exposure. Uh, I, I shot a few portraits, a few more portrait exposures than um, I anticipated to be honest with you. Um, I like this cool shot of the convention center. Again, we have the planes coming down, touching down at the airport. And I love the clouds. Like the light just kept changing because behind us was the storm system. And it at one point it just started raining. So uh, this was actually after I took my camera back out once it stopped raining. So we had a storm system move through, through the area. Um, this photo was right before it started raining. Then I put my camera away and this is right after it stopped again. So it's a little dark, but it's really moody. I really like it. And I like the fact that there's a little bird here too. So the little seagulls were flying around. Um, so I'm gonna keep this. I'm not too um, big into this photo. I, I like the light, it looked better in color. You'll see on the GoPro video, it looked really nice with the color and we have a, a ship here, um, but it's, it's not gonna make the cut. So I'm gonna delete. This again, I like the clouds. Um, here you get a pretty cool view of uh, some of the mountains down south, southeast, yeah, southeast now. And you get a cool shot of Coronado Bridge. I'm gonna keep this for now. I definitely need to straighten it. I see that the horizon's off, so we'll need to straighten it. The exposure isn't bad. Um, and we have some, some, some decent, uh, you know, we have some birds here, you know, in the mid ground. Again, the light changed and you could see how the sun was peeking through the clouds here and it just really illuminated the city like perfectly and you had this insanely moody sky so the sky really really became moody and um i i, I just thought it it started looking awesome so um i have a, a series in this i'm gonna keep that here's mr ev uh we'll see how much we can keep and recover he had an umbrella i left mine in the car um so we'll keep him here Shot through the bushes. There's some bushes in front here in Bay Park or Bayview Park. I'm uh, not sold on this yet, but we'll see where that takes us. Again, we're shooting towards uh, the the Navy Yard here. This one looks to be a little out of focus too. Um, I'm gonna delete this. I wish this. I took this at the wrong time. We had a few seagulls pass through. Um, let's see what we can do with this. Maybe I can, maybe I can save this with a crop. I don't really shoot to crop, to be honest with you, especially not on this sensor. It is an 18 megapixel sensor. It's not like you have a lot of room to crop, but let's see. I'm going to keep this for now. I love the clouds here, the cloud formation, the cloud formation here. Let's see what we can do with this. Yeah, this is off. Um, anything sal salvageable here? No, this is really underexposed. I'm going to delete. Again, this is tilted, so again, I'm shooting. You can see the rocks. I'm trying to get them in the foreground, but I'm like hugging some. So I don't, yeah, I'm gonna say no to this one too. No to this one, it's very similar to this one. The challenge with this is I was shooting pretty, uh, I wasn't, you know, my depth of field wasn't crazy. Obviously I was shooting with the red filter, so that cuts out a lot of light. And I was going handheld, so I didn't shoot on a tripod. Not that I would with this with the monochrome. Um, 
I'm going to delete this one too. This is okay. I will keep that one. Is a bird in focus? Maybe, actually. Maybe just a little off. I don't know if we'll be able to tell. Let's see. I'll keep that. Uh, at one point... Yeah, that's cool. I love the clouds, man. Let's just keep this. This one... This is the moon here in the middle of the frame. Uh, I didn't realize it was the moon. I wasn't paying attention, uh, but you'll see it later in the sequence. It came out and it looked pretty sweet. I like the cloud formation. Don't love the shot. The mountain now you can't. There's no definition in the mountain, so we'll see if we could. If there's any detail, we can recover there. Let's keep that just in case. I I love the puffiness of the clouds. Like this this red filter was clutch, man. I'll tell you, if you shoot monochrome, it's worth it. Get like an orange filter and red filter. Especially if you're going to do stuff like this. Uh, this is just shooting up at the sky. We had some really solid rays come through. And this is on the video as well. The GoPro video. It looked really, really beautiful. Um, it, I stopped this down. Um, I stopped this to about F8. This is registering F8.5. I stopped this down. Um, and you could see the spots. The dust is everywhere, dude. Look at this. Yeah, the sensor is doy. We need to clean this up. Let's see if we could salvage this, because this one was a cool one. I like the rays. Uh, this I don't like at all. Um, I was just shooting some some shots. I, I asked Ev. Well, I didn't really ask Ev. I just started shooting him. <laughs> um, so in the shot, you can't see right now until I increase the exposure. But what happened was just behind us, we had the sun setting, and it was reflecting off some of the higher clouds and it was reflecting this beautiful orange light and it was casting right on his face so it was really soft and illuminating right right on his forehead and his face here and you could actually see the catch light too um not that it was the sun's catch light but it just really it just looked really really awesome and um i think he's got a catch light of like clouds or something but i i just really liked the how soft the light was and it was just bathing him and i just started snapping some photos of him um and we'll see this was at f uh this is at f2 so for people that were like me considering the sumilux this is a 50 year old lens 60 year old lens and that's the background at f2 i mean wide open it just melts to nothing and this lens vignettes pretty heavily wide open and it casts this amazing glow like if you manage to center your subject if you have more of a center weighted composition with your subject it glows. I'll be honest. It is. There's just something so special about this. I've shot my wife so many times with this lens, and every single time I take a portrait of her, it just it, there's just something that just draws you in. Uh, the vignette helps. The the bokeh is really really nice and smooth. And this is f2, so it's already hard enough to focus this lens, man. Um, but anyway, so we'll take a look at these portraits here. I was really hoping to get these ones in focus because we have some of the skylight uh, behind them illuminated really nicely. I stopped this down a little bit. Um, to help me out here with the with the depth of field and with the exposure. So these were about, you know, I think F4. I stopped down. I, I wasn't looking at the lens, but, uh, you know, if I could make a guess, you know, I, I, I was around F4 at the time. Um, it's a little off, and this bothers me because I would have loved this because he's got his tripod in too. Same thing here. And, again, the sun is just bathing him, so I'm just kind of asking him to just look up. Not really posing because... Mr. Ev doesn't really like to pose for a photo, even though he's a photographer. So, Ev, if you're watching this, uh, I hope you are or you see this at some point. Your black, uh, your blue steel in here, man. But it looks good. I know you don't like to pose for these shots, but it looks really good. I just wish I nailed the focus, which I didn't. Now, um, what's difficult and what I've heard from people is that using a red filter makes it uh, a little bit more difficult to focus the rangefinder. It actually throws it off. So I've noticed that I'm not going to take. I'm not going to make an excuse for a shot that's out of focus. However, I've uh, been told and I've noticed that uh, the red filter does shift the focus. It's something to do with the wave light, uh, the wavelengths of light, and when you're blocking with a red filter, something about the rangefinder just becomes less accurate. So. Obviously, more pronounced when it's not stopped down. I haven't had an issue if I stop the lens down, and I'll show you examples from earlier today. But in this one, I missed it. So, I'm not going to blame the lens. Um, and here's the moon. The moon came out. So, I wonder if I blew this exposure. I don't. Ah, oh, damn it, I did. 
It was so bright. Oh, it was really, really bright. You can see how hot it is on the screen. There's some definition, but this side of the moon, the, the right side of the moon is blown out. Yeah, see, that's blown too. Damn. You'll see how you can't recover that. And even the plane's blown out. This on the plane and the lights on the plane are blown out. And this is actually a little bit out of focus. I shot this at 1 45th of a second and I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, this is way out of focus. Yeah, this is a delete. That's easy. Delete. <laughs> this one is not great. Again, uh, this one's sharper, so I'm going to delete this one. This one, we got some cool... So we have some lights turning on now in the city. I wonder how this will pull back. This one doesn't look to be... All right, so we have detail in the moon. So that we're pretty we're pretty underexposed here, actually. Um, let's see what we could do. Any chat? Anything? No, nothing in the chat. Cool. There is... Um, cool. I've liked this. You better be watching this, dude. <laughs> Just checking my marketing. I saw some notifications come in from Facebook. Um, hmm. Let's keep this one. And we're getting to the end here. I'm going to keep this one too. This is really dark. So this is the last one. So we saved about 25. Um, so we killed 11 of these original photos um, from the series. So let's let's edit. Let's go through and edit some of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is straighten the horizon. I mean, what's nice is we have a nice... Uh, we have a nice water line to kind of go off of, and we also have these buildings. And shooting with this 50 is nice because I was trying to shoot as uh, perpendicular as possible and keep the the sensor perpendicular uh, to to the subject. You know, I was in tilting up, so I'm not keystoning. I was trying not to keystone. Um, so let's let's do let's straighten. So I'm gonna go up top. Uh, this is the straighten tool. Uh, you can it's it's under the rotate tool. So if you want the shortcut, it is the R key. So I, I hit the R key and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a really long line to just make sure that this is aligned. It's just a little, it was just a little off. So that's, that's cool. I'm, I'm okay with that. Next thing I want to do is I want to clean up some of these sensor spots. Uh, I'm OCD. I don't like it. Um, and I am just going to get rid of them. So I click the spot removal tool, the remove spot tool, and I am on the dust setting. So if you right click, you can see that there's multiple types. There's dust and spot. And I'm using a radius of 56 um, on on this one. So let's see. That's okay. Sometimes I don't like the fact that this will leave a circle. Um, I've noticed that, especially with the fine grain. Um, it, it's very pronounced where you actually use the spot removal. And sometimes I'll use the clone stamp tool here to clone stamp it out. So let's um, let's edit. Yeah. So we have, again, I'm, I'm going to try not to crop. I, I want to try to get the composition right, and I'm, I'm working on actively getting the composition right in camera, especially since this 18 megapixel sensor, you know, once you start cropping in, you start pixelating pretty quickly, you know, so I don't want to, um, and I want to have as much resolution. If I ever print or if I ever post online, I want to have the best result possible. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is bring up the exposure a little bit, seeing as though it could, it could use some love here. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. And let's see, uh, I want to kill some of these, uh, some of these highlights actually, because I, I want to start making this a little bit more dramatic. Uh, shadow, I'm not going to really touch the shadows that much because they're pretty clean. You have, a, you have, the buildings are bathed pretty well with the sunlight. I want to kind of make the sky more exaggerated and the water darker and more pronounced. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually uh, decrease the black point throughout the entire image. And I'm going to increase the white point of the image. That's already giving it some more uh, some more contrast. Um, the brightness I don't really touch. Obviously, there's no saturation to touch. So this this you know I don't understand why this is still an option with the monochrome sensor. But I'm going to bring down the overall brightness a little bit down, and I'm going to increase contrast slightly. But I like to add contrast with um, actually like to add contrast with the luminance curves. So I expanded. I have so I made very quick edits to the exposure which we'll, we'll probably fine tune the dynamic range and i didn't touch clarity yet we're gonna do that last i i just usually touch that sharpness and clarity stuff last um and i expanded the curve 
So if you don't have curve open, uh, you could you could add it. I have the default view. So um, if you go to your view, I have um, I believe I just have the, the the regular default view for all the windows, the the default workspace. So all right, let's go to Luma. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an S curve. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that my my blacks are definitely more black. And I'm going to go to to my uh, my highlights, and I'm going to increase, and I'm going to increase those throughout. Might even increase some of the midpoint here, mid tones, and that's looking pretty pretty nice. I do have a film simulation that is like a clean triax, and I like to use that. So this is the triax, right? So that's Tri-X, and this is without it. A little bit more, a little bit more contrast than the edit I just did. So I'm going to keep my edit. Actually, I'm not going to go to the Tri-X. The only thing I need to do is, is add some, add some clarity to this. And because there's no people in this, you know, you could, I I would go a little bit harder usually. Um, I'm very careful with how much I play with these sliders, especially when it comes to people and portraits. You don't want to make somebody's face way too sharp and defined, but so a little bit definitely goes a long way, especially in Capture One. But you could already see the detail change; it's pretty spectacular. I mean, you could go do an overkill and just really sharpen the shit out of this, and honestly, it looks pretty terrible. I don't recommend going that hard; it doesn't look real. So I, I don't really, I, 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 I very seldom use something over like a twenty structure. It's, it just looks, it doesn't look as natural. It looks over sharpened. And, uh, you know, you, you can get haloing too, which I, I hate that look. It looks like terrible HDR. Like, same thing with clarity. Look, if you go straight with the clarity, I mean, that looks terrible. It looks trash, you know? I mean, it, it, some people go for this look, right? So if you shoot a really high contrast film, and that's a personal preference, it's just not my style. I don't like it. Um, so again, the most I'd ever go uh, is, you know, I, I usually don't pass 20 with, with clarity either. It's It's very you know, very seldom do I. And, um, you know, I think that's, it keeps a little bit more measured. Now what I will do, this is actually starting to look, you know, pretty contrasty, which I really like, and that's the look I'm going for. I think it's important to know the kind of look you're going for before editing some photography, because then if you're looking for mood, you could add mood, right? And there's different ways of doing that. I'm obviously doing it, you know, through a pretty high contrast here uh, from an otherwise, you know, pretty gray image so you can always add um, but you need to stop at some point so the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add a gradient so I'm going to go up top to um, add a gradient where are my I'm going to hit uh, so we need to draw a mask so there's there's a few gradients you could you could add uh, if you hit the L key you're going to draw a linear gradient so hitting L is going to allow you to click and draw. Uh, now I'm going to add two gradients. I'm going to actually darken the sky and I'm going to darken, I'm going to add an inverted gradient here in the foreground to also darken the, the water a little bit. So it's going to give, uh, it's going to add a little bit more balance and a little bit more eye uh, catching appeal to the skyline itself. But let's start with the, let's handle the skyline first. So. I'm going to just decrease a, a little bit of the exposure and I am going to, let's see, do we want to really hit it with contrast? No, I'm going to handle my, I'm going to handle my contrast, honestly, just by using a luminance curve. So I'm just going to pull down some of the shadows and I'm just going to add a little bit more. I feel like this, um, you definitely have way more control by using curves and again you could dial this back so this this is an adjustment layer that gets added so you could always just refine and feather this effect i'm going to also add another one so i'm going to drag from the bottom and i'll tell you why in a second so very often when you're doing you know um landscape photography especially if you have a, a situation in which you have a reflection or you have water right the water is going to reflect the sky so if you're it's, I mean, I find a good practice and it looks a little bit visually 
a little bit better and a little bit more refined and finished if you actually you know handle the the water too so if you're if you're going to add something to uh to the um what did i just do okay no i just i just totally inverted that. sorry i just had a i just had a I, I need to add a second adjustment layer for that. Sorry, I was just looking at what I just did and I was like, wait, that's wrong. Yeah, so so what I always do with water is I, I also replicate uh, some of the effect in, in the water itself so that it, it mirrors kind of what's going on uh, going on above. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mirror that slightly. So I'm just gonna increase the highlights and just bring down bring down the shadows a little bit in the water. And you can already see that there's a big difference. Now what I want to do is, uh, because I did this, I'm going to actually increase the exposure of the of of the overall background, so we can keep the exposure a little bit darker on the lower end and the top and bottom end of the image, and we can, you know, make sure that the, the there's still some balance and there's still this nice uh, these nice luminance values on the actual cityscape. So that's uh, here's here's how this plays out. So here's the top so this is this is a photo without anything so just to look the the global adjustments here's the treatment to the sky here's the treatment to the water it's very subtle but it works and it mirrors you saw that most of the image in the water got darker here which reflects the darker cloud right above it which i think you know brings a little bit more balance and again you know i had to bring up the exposure slightly and i wanted to just because i wanted to make these buildings like stand out a little bit more um you know so I think, I think this is pretty dramatic. It really definitely, um, at least to my eye, I think that this looks good. I think this is a good place to stop, for example, on this image. And it reminds me of the mood and what I felt kind of just being there. You know, it was pretty dramatic in the sky. And that's kind of the look I'm going for for all of these. So to some, this may be a little bit too much. Uh, I think this is personally a good place to stop. We still have, you know, a nice, I'm looking at the histogram and we have values that cover the gamut and the spectrum. So from very dark to bordering on blown out like we have here, you know, so we're covering everything from a black point to a white point, which, you know, if you know anything about Ansel Adams zone system, we're covering the zone system uh, to a way that makes me happy and our shadows aren't completely destroyed and demolished. You know, there's still detail in the shadows, which I'm very happy about. Um, and we're getting a lot of these smaller details too in, in, in the background. So um, I'm very happy. Let's continue on. So I like this photo, but I don't love it. And because I love this one more, I'm going to delete this one. So, bye. <laughs> now, this photo is obviously too dark. So we have the convention center here, and I love this reflection on the water. Um, I think it's a little too centered, and there's not much going on in the sky that's interesting. So this is one that I will crop. And I don't always crop to, to rule of thirds. Um, I, I try to not necessarily crop to rule of thirds. And I want to keep a three by two aspect ratio. There we go. So uh, I, I try not to crop the rule of thirds on purpose if I can if I can manage to not. Um, I think it just makes the composition look, you know, like you tried, right? Like if you definitely put that building, you know, at crosshairs of the rule of thirds, then it looks like you specifically tried to crop that way versus just shooting that way. I mean, I was pretty close. It was just off. And there's nothing in the sky here that is very redeeming or brings too much interest into the photo. I think, you know, what's really cool is kind of having, you know, we have our foreground with, we have this little bird here in the foreground. Um, and I actually like the shot, by the way. So I, so here's here's what I look for in, in, in a nicer landscape shot and even in generally street photography. I like having visual interest throughout the entire frame. You know, that really helps the composition because you have things of interest in uh, the foreground, you have some sort of mid-ground thing of interest, right? You have point of interest, and then you have something in the background as well. So you have these layers and you're just looking deeper into the image, right? In this case, we're looking this way. I generally like to look the other way in my images, but um, I, uh, yeah, so we have, um, 
we're really kind of following this bird on, into the water, into the building, the skyline, and then the rest of the sky and kind of going up. So visually, this I think is a nicer photo than the previous one here, which is honestly just a skyline in a very moody, dramatic fashion. Uh, to some extent, it's even moodier, right? So I dig it. Let's um, let me uh, let's keep going. So this one is way darker than the previous photo. So that was kind of on purpose, and I also had the light change, but I like how dark it is. I don't, I don't think this photo is gonna be helped out by going way too bright. So like I could do a two-stop correction, which is what it is. It's a two-stop difference here, but that doesn't look good. I mean, that looks really flat to me. You know, now I'm really focusing because the bird is so dark and silhouetted to some extent, you know, you. you kind of lose it but it also is just kind of in the middle there it's it's not that it takes your eye to it, it draws yourself to it but there's not enough harmony and balance in the shot itself i i much prefer the shot to be maybe like a one stop or half stop uh over so like increase in exposure and just keep it moody and dark because that's really kind of what i'm looking for here so i want to double down on this dark the dark look for the image i think it helps it more than it hurts it so i'm gonna maybe i mean one stop one stop i might go one stop and then again bring back the mood so let's go to one stop in terms of overall brightness on the image and i'm gonna knock down that sky again and i'm gonna play with the foreground again so similarly to how we just edited that other photo i'm gonna do similar things to this so i'm gonna bring down the black point uh i'm gonna increase the white point um I just said I don't usually go for the clarity until later, but I know what I'm going to do with this. So I'm going to bring the clarity back up to or closer to the 20 hash mark here. This is nice. Just making sure that we're not haloing anywhere. Uh, that's nice. And then uh, Luma Curve. So I'm not going to add a Luma Curve to the image. I'm going to actually just take care of the sky this time around. So I'm going to I'm going to draw my I'm going to add my adjustment layer. And I'm gonna draw. Uh, I'm gonna drag from the top. I I I clicked. You could hit the L key, and I clicked from the top to um, to drag the gradient. And I'm gonna stop. You see how there's a little feather to the gradient. I want to make sure that feather doesn't really touch the skyline at all. So we're kind of really drawn into to these um, to these clouds here. And we're gonna just we're gonna really exaggerate this with an S curve like that looks awesome yeah we're gonna make we're gonna make this dark we're gonna we're gonna really make this dark yeah it looks cool it just gives more depth and more flavor to the image it more personality i think you lean in you know sometimes you just want to lean in i just added another adjustment layer and i'm going to drag from the bottom hold the shift key to make sure that it's straight parallel and I'm going to do a very similar thing here. I'm probably going to, I need to bring up the midpoint here because uh, I obviously want to make sure that the it's dark enough, but I also don't want to lose the bird. So I'm really paying attention to the bird here. This S curve is going to be a little bit more modified, a little bit more pronounced. See, because if we worry about this area here where the bird is, you know, if we brighten that up, which is this all midpoint, midtones um you know we're going to be able to see the bird a little bit more there's going to be more contrast between the background of the bird and this is th i mean this this s curve looks ridiculous uh let's make it a little bit more round it out a little bit nicer yeah this is right in this point here i think that looks great I'm gonna go back to the background and just make sure this is just so dramatic, man. I love it. Yeah, it looks great. So like again, let's let's uh let's kill everything. So background, sky, foreground, and midground with the S curve. And then we could do I mean we could do it before and after. So if you want to see what this looked like, this is what the before was, after. See how like everything was nice and gray and very moody? And look at that. Much better. So I dig it. I totally dig it. 
This was this was one I'm definitely gonna. I think I might post this one actually. I think this is the this is one of my favorites from tonight. Let's see. Uh, I just want to periodically check these comments here. Uh, okay, we're good. What do we have here? Now, see what's tough for me is so. We just had these two shots. I mean, I like the moodiness of this, but I love this. I mean, this has everything. This has light kissing the buildings. It has the reflection. It has nice depth in the image. And then we kind of get to this, and I like this less. I don't want to delete it, but it, there's way less visual interest here for me than I'd like. I, I think we could do something with this cloud, perhaps. All right, you know what? Let's give it a chance. Let's see if we can do something with this. Let's just give it a chance. What I'm doing right now, oops, is not what I wanted to do. Um, I'm going to straighten. So hit uh, hit R to straighten and draw your line across. Okay. I'm going to kill this little corner here. This corner doesn't serve the image. Um, so I'd rather just have the rest of the uh, skyline um, be in it. And also there... What I don't like about this image that I didn't realize is there's the mountain kind of peeking from the side and the mountain right now is adding a little bit of extra visual interest, but I'm not showing it. So like that, I feel like makes it worse. It makes it look like I wasn't paying attention. Same thing here. You know, we have half a building cut off. So I kind of want to just clean this up to where it looks like I wanted to shoot this a little bit in, more in, in an intentional way. I want to preserve. So I'm not looking again, I'm not looking at rule of thirds. I'm throwing that out the window right now because I want to preserve certain elements of this image that I think aid the, the composition and the actual depth of the image. So if I would have kept traditional rule of thirds, you know, I mean, sure, you could say you can focus on some of these buildings, but if you actually do adhere to it and take this frame down to almost the waterline here, we actually preserve some sort of visual interest in terms of this um, reflection. I don't know if it's going to be enough because there's nothing here. You know, so let's just work with it. Also, it kills a lot of the sky and it also gets rid of one of these spots on the sensor. So it makes my job of doing local edits a lot easier. I think this looks better. You know, if you if you look at the uh, well, I don't want to do before and after because it doesn't show the full crop. So let's for, let's skip the before and after until we do the actual edit. So uh, I think this exposure is not terrible. I do think it needs like about a half stop. Um, and again, we're going to bring this down. So I think, I think a half stop would do it well. So let's, let's do a half stop, half stop. I want to bring down, I might actually do some local adjustments here. Uh, let's see, let's, let's add the black point in pretty heavy on the black point, white point. No, I want to kill these highlights too. I want to I want to bring back as much of the detail in the clouds as possible, and I'm going to add the the rest of the uh, the rest of these. Or actually, wait, do I need to do that? Nah, highlight slider doesn't do much. I've noticed for this this camera. I really try to stay away from this contrast slider. To be honest with you. Now right, look at this. It looks terrible. All right, let's uh. Let's just go. Let's just go back to negative one and reset. I liked this around the twenty mark. This is washed out. Like the convention center is a little washed out, and it's a really cool building. Um, I wonder if we could maybe paint in. I have an idea. All right, let's add some adjustment layers let's let's bring down let's bring this down let's let's bring this way down so again i am gonna go to the top of so where the feather basically hits the top of these buildings and what i want to do is i want to see if i can knock down this exposure there we go and really add some drama here maybe I don't like how there's, you know, these these deeper black clouds. Yeah, it just becomes distracting, man. Oh, it becomes distracting. I'm not gonna do the I'm not gonna do the water because there's, it's, or no, I'm gonna do the water. 
Again, I don't love this image, so take take that with this. take any of these edits as trying to save this image. Let's bring down some of the exposure here. Bring the exposure. We'll add a curve. I'm gonna add another layer, and what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna I'm gonna use the I'm gonna draw the mask. I'm gonna draw a mask in this area right here, and uh no, all right. What I need to do is I need to increase the flow and opacity rate. Um, I had mine way, 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 way down, way down. I want to bring definition to that cloud. I want to bring the exposure of that cloud down so we can get that definition. There we go. All right, maybe increase the contrast in the freaking cloud. Decrease the contrast. Give me something here. I don't know how I feel about this yet. Let me add another adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to, oops. This time I'm gonna brush in, I'm gonna paint the city a little bit. Let's bring some exposure back here. I didn't wanna do this, but I think we're gonna to need to. This is really rough. Um, this is when you need a Wacom tablet, people. Not sponsored. I miss my Wacom tablet. That thing's awesome. All right, let's just give it like a line of of extra love here. Yeah, there we go. I was basically just dodging this whole area a little bit more. Adding some more, uh, some more love in in the buildings. A little bit more sun kissed. Maybe a little bit more contrast here too. Just really adding some love back into the skyline. You know what? That's not terrible. That isn't terrible. Let's see. Before and after. Where were we at? Bang. Super flat. We got some pop going here. Okay, you know what? I'll take it. I'm happy with this. I will take it. It doesn't look overdone either. Like, you know, we're kind of keeping the shadows. We're painting some more light in these light areas already, so I'm not, like, trying to invert anything here. I, it doesn't look terrible, you know, to the point where it looks like it was... You tried too hard. All right, so this is this is a shot that I want. But I don't know what I want from it. Here's what I like. Let's crop this. Let's let's straighten. So first of all, it's way out of whack. So let's first thing first, the easy thing to do is straighten. Second thing I want to do is figure out exactly what I want to do because we do have so we have these buildings that are cut off here, which obviously I'm going to get rid of. We have this crane, which is ugly. I don't like. We're going to get rid of. So at least that much of the image is gone. Now, how much of this foreground is going to serve us versus not? I like the clouds. I like the clouds. I don't like all these rocks, so I moved this up on purpose to hide this rock down here. And I don't love all these areas, but there are the birds, so we do have some sort of foreground, and we have we have action, we have detail throughout the shot. And again, the eye is leading us to the to the mountains. So let's let's work with this starting point. I think this is good. Good enough. So I think this is this is fine. All right, let's let's uh, so the obviously the exposure can use at least half a stop. Um, which is what I'm looking for here. I want to try to get some more detail back in these rocks and I'm probably going to add some more shadow. See, so we can get some more uh, detail in the shadow here. And what I'm going to do here is actually take a gradient sweeping the side of this and, and really adding some more, um, some more definition to those areas. So we have people's houses here and I just increase the shadows, um, to about 30. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy because I don't want them to be milky. You know what I mean? That's another thing. We don't want these to be milky. So let's do, let's do like the 30 we were at. I think that that was good. 
black point. I'm not going to mess with the white point. I'm going to bring down the highlights, clarity, structure. So now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to balance out. I want to make sure that these rocks get um, more love. I want to make sure that you can see the fact that there are rocks there. And then the sky. We're going to make the sky darker and, and more dramatic. And I want to make sure that these mountains back here kind of... Uh, see some love as well so I think overall this is this is pretty good so let's 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 adjust the luma I think we could go down in exposure a little bit I'm trying to get more definition. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to get more definition in these mountains without really losing. See, I'm working in the midtones here. Uh, I'm not really worrying about this. This just needed to be, you know, we need to be careful with the shadows here. But I'm, I'm really working on, we got this cool looking curve here. But I'm really working in this area here. That's where I'm, that's where I'm working. I want to make sure that there's more detail. And then you could actually see this. Your eye kind of goes to it too. So I want to work on that section. Uh, I'm also looking for any sensor spots now because we are shooting against a brighter sky and some of these darker clouds cleared away. So I'm looking at that. Um, let's add an adjustment layer and kill, kill some of the detail in the sky here. Or let's, uh, let's I should say bring it down. I'm, I'm trying to be careful about the trees here and the building so I might have to move this up but for now let's uh, let's add an s-curve but like lower down I'll bring some of these highlights down we add some contrast. Can we add some contrast? Yeah. I'll bring the black black point down. It's gonna be stronger up top, you know. So I'm worrying. I'm I'm worrying about that. You know, I don't want to make it too distracting. You know, in these clouds, I do want to have some some sort of detail here. We're probably gonna have to do some local adjustments in that area too. That's fine. I'm okay with that. So let's let's add a second adjustment layer. And this time I'm going to come with the adjustment layer actually from the side. So there we go. I'm going to come from the side because I want this to, um, I want, I want to add some more, I want to do some work in this area here. So I definitely want to increase some of this structure and clarity again here just to get a little bit more separation from these rocks. I know I'm adding extra, um, but I think it needs it. And let's do an S curve here. How are these holding up here? Okay, I'm getting some more definition, which is cool. And be careful with the black point. Maybe a touch of exposure. I think that looks nice. Okay. I think that looks good. I don't really want to touch. I'm going to do local adjustments next. And by local, I'm going to brush in. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to create a mask here. Uh, I'm going to decrease my size, though. I think the size is way too... Uh, I want to feather more, and I think the size needs to be... I want to, I want to give some love to the mountain. And then what I want to do is give some love to these clouds here and throughout, honestly, a little bit. So let's give some love to the mountain first. Let's uh, let's increase some let's increase some exposure here, or increase some contrast, I should say. Did 
there's a lot of detail in those midtones, and I want to attack those midtones. And conversely, I want to increase some of these highlights. Um, that's what I'm doing. I want to see if there's not much back there. Um, so we're going to add all of that there. And what I'm going to do is I want to make some pretty sweeping. Um, actually, now I'm curious to see if could could we do this up here too? Clouds. Because it's 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 very similar values, right? So the values are very similar. So like these puffy clouds, I want to kind of hit with a similar treatment. And just really accentuate some of the, you know, we're look we're working the same luminance, uh, roughly I should say, some of the same luminance values, you know, that we're seeing here. I like that. All right, let's take a look at a before and after. Pretty flat, nothing going on, and then bang. I think that looks cool. I'm happy with this. Obviously less moody. I mean, there's more action and stuff in the clouds. Way less moody than something like this. I mean, this is pretty freaking moody. I like this less now that we added some of those. I like the water here. I think the water is nice. Uh, this is Ev. Let's... <clears throat> I don't love this shot, but we could work with it. I think we could heavily crop it, especially to get the flag out of the shot. I don't think the flag does us a service. Um, I'll be honest, I don't. Let's see what we can do here. I will clone stamp that flag post out. Uh, Ev, I'm sorry I don't love this shot. Let's come back to it. I don't love it. I like the exposure. I don't like this either. It's too bushy. This one, this one could work. The only challenge is we lost, we lost the mountain here. You know, so realistically, I think what would work well, and this is what I was thinking about for this shot, was actually to go vertical here. And this is like a really heavy crop on this image. I mean... We're talking very heavy, um, and we need to straighten it too. So I just cropped it and straightening it. So we're we're talking serious cropping here. Um, but we have some awesome. Check out these birds. See, we have this. Uh, we have this uh, seagull here. Um, I think we have some. No, those are chairs and benches. Uh, we have, and then obviously this one here. So that's kind of what we're working with. So let's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase, this absolutely needs to stop. It needs to stop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat the sky and the foreground separately just because it's so, we're in the shade here, right? So it's very high contrast. You have, you know, the light that you have in this bright sky, and then you have a very dark foreground. So we just need to handle that. And surprisingly, you know, this, this like a monochrome for as old as it is, it does pretty well, man. It does pretty well with some of this stuff. Um, I'm very surprised at how well it, it, it handles some, some of this, uh, some of this work, you know, from, from the sensor that I, you know, is pretty old now. And the CCD isn't as malleable. Like I said, I want to really bring down this, um, really bring down the mood. CCD sensor is pretty old now. It's getting on. It's a little bit more balanced. I want less mood. I want more mood in the clouds here. Um, so a little bit more balance in the shot than the other ones. I think that's a good starting point. Let's add some adjustments. Again, I am going to drag gradient from the top. Mm -hmm. 
kill the I'm gonna kill a lot of the highlights. Actually, probably some of the exposure, kind of even it out. Let's even the shot out. I think it looks cool. But I don't want to lose a seagull. So this is where we do have to be careful here. Because we if it, this gets a little too dark here, you know, we do lose a seagull. And I don't want to. I hate seagulls. <laughs> this is a story for another day. But I got hit in the head smacked by a seagull when I was really young. Since then, seagulls have had a special place of hatred in my heart. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Let's add some more clarity to this, um, to the foreground again. What is going on? I think this is cool. I think a big part of editing, and I'm not the first person to ever say this, is knowing when to stop. Like, here's where we were. Here's where we're at. Much better result. I think this is a good place to stop. This is a place where I'm comfortable stopping. The rest of this... So this is where the moon starts setting. I don't like how blurry these are, so I'm going to kill... I'm gonna kill a lot. Honestly, I don't like any of this. I don't like. I think this is smack dab in the middle. I don't think. I hate the composition. I hate the way these uh, little, um, these little seaweed things uh, washed up in front of the image. I, I don't like that. I mean, they were there. They didn't wash up in front of my image. Uh, we have something moody already that handles this. This again, unless I crop this heavily, there's nothing interesting here. We're really making our way through these images, aren't we? Um, we went from 36 to 19 and we have some calling to do. I like this one. I want to see what we can do with this because this is a pretty high contrast. How much can we bring back? Oh, geez, we could bring back a lot. All right, I'm not going to bring back all that. I do want to, I'm going to go really crazy on this. Uh, I'm going to really increase the clarity and the structure and all this stuff. Um, and we're going to go wild on this S curve. I want to really push this. I'll try to also find this value. Okay, that's this value. All right, this is going to be interesting. All right, so we have a lot of cleanup to do. I don't even know if it's going to be worth editing this image. Let's see. Oh, man, we have so much cleanup to do. This is why you keep your sensor clean, kids. Honestly, I don't I don't know if I could edit all these out with just this tool. I might have to do some clone stamping here. I'm just using the spot removal tool for now. Um, and you can see it doesn't work in all instances. And the thing I hate about the spot removal tool is having some dots throughout the shot, which I'm not getting, which is good. This one's here. Uh, yeah, I'm cleaning the sensor, guys. I need to clean the sensor. This is ridiculous. And look at this. Look at this thing right here. All right, let's make this bigger to handle that area. Will it clean it? Okay, yes it did. It's pretty impressive. Capture One's come a long way, man. Let's see, how did it do here though? No, that looks like crap. All right, we need to clone stamp. So clone stamping, this is called draw cloning mask. So it's the S tool. What you wanna do is you wanna hit your option key, select a point similar to that which you're gonna edit and then go to that one and edit. That's, it, it will edit, it'll replace it'll replace that spot with something very similar to what you're sampling. 
it becomes easier said than done though because like something as detailed as as this next section here is going to be way harder to clone stamp and you'll see in a second so if, say i want to sample here and edit this whole section let's see oh that's really good i'll take that I'll take that any day well done it's almost like photoshop like see look this is what i hate about doing the dust removal tool guys there's these little white dots everywhere. See where I removed every single speck of dust? It's like if you zoom in, you can see these things. I don't know if they show up in YouTube, but I really hate that. I mean, I think it's such a, it's such a pain. It's such a pain. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, I I like I want to I want to use this image. I just think I might be uh. I don't know let's let's keep playing i don't know let's keep playing maybe they won't be as apparent if i make it darker or i don't know let's edit a portrait i need something different which one do we like this one ev is leaning it's kind of leaning in this one i like the lean this one looks good let's let's give it a half stop or one stop are we in focus looks like it focused I focused on his back eye that's also gonna matter too okay this one's more on his front leading eye it might be this one unless he's also rocking I don't know why you're rocking Ev if you're watching this it's your fault this one too uh, this one's okay this one's kind of like in here let's do this one this one looks to be in focus where I want it, at least on his eyebrow here so let's do this one so I, portraits, I look for the leading eye to be in focus. Simple as that. That's what I focus on. Nothing else. The photo will look like crap if that's not the case. So try to take a portrait next time and throw it out of focus or focus on the back shoulder or focus on the background. It'll look like poo-poo. Yes, that's right. I said poo-poo. So let's, let's increase. Let's kill the... I focus. So I killed the. I, I brought down the highlights. Um, I don't really know how much I want to bring out of the shadows, to be honest with you, because can look a little unnatural. But I do want more detail in his in his jacket. Um, so we might have to. Uh, but I'll bring that down and see. I'll balance. So what you have to do is balance the shadows. When you when you raise the shadows, you definitely want to balance. So you're feathering this black slider with the shadow slider. Um, you know, and in this case, I want to see the fact that he's got this nice Pico on, but I don't want it to be the end all be all. And I do want to increase the black because he's got, you know, he's got awesome black hair and, you know, these axes like the mask was black. And I think it adds to the contrast of this overall, uh, shot. Um, I don't think white's going to do anything for us. Uh, I'm going to, again, since this is a portrait, I'm not going to go that heavy with the, with the clarity and the structure, although on with men you kind of you know if you go really hard especially on the clarity and the structure you can make them look a lot older you know i mean same thing for for women obviously um but it's it's more flattering um for for you know the ladies to have smoother skin so you don't want to go you have to you really want to watch your clarity and structure sliders here so i'm not i'm not going to go to 20. i mean if i do it will look like plastic and actually he'll look sharp like sharp as in cut you sharp not what we're looking for so um, I'm going to go back to the Luma and I'm going to add uh, just a, a slight S curve on the, on the Luma. And I'm going to bring up uh, some of these midtones, especially where his skin is. So you can see exactly where some of that detail is. Um, yeah. And just really balance it out and make the goal every single time for me is to make the skin look real and alive and natural so as natural as black and white skin could look maybe a little bit more of an increase and one thing i do is actually do a um depending on the shot but i'll actually do a a touch of a vignette but i'll i'll, I'll build the vignette so i'm gonna just you know pop ev with a few uh few pops of my brush here big brush and I'll increase this exposure around around him and create kind of this uh, 
you know, this pop out effect, especially on this side of his body. Um, I'll just paint that in and add a little bit more. It just makes it stand out a little bit more from the background as opposed to not like you'll see the difference. See the difference? See how he stands out a little bit more. Uh, and that's kind of how the light was kind of hitting him, obviously less uh, less so than this. But it, it just takes me back to how the light was actually hitting him and maybe a little bit less, but just, a, just a little bit. Just needs a little tiny bit where his shoulder is right here. Yeah, it looks good. Looking good, dude. Um, there's a lot of wasted space here, so we could uh, bring this in a lot. Um, and I think that that'll help out the portrait. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. I think that's clean. I'm gonna get you to pose for me next time, dude. If you're watching this, you're posing next time. So, fair uh, fair warning here. Um, okay. This one, these ones I'm not gonna edit. Um, this one also, I mean, I could, let me just copy these settings and just quickly see. I don't see him being in focus. And that bothers me because I wonder where the focus was. This was 190th of a second, so it wasn't camera shake. It was just focus. It was poor focus. That makes me so mad um, because it had his camera. You see his Nikon on the tripod pointing to the city. This would have been pretty cool. I'm sorry, bro. Delete. Delete. And now it's to the... Um, these last few here so last whatever in the series this one i'm just gonna honestly go by composition and blown out this is blown out delete blown out camera shake delete this one has some visual interest but it, there's a distracting plane here and i find these seagulls distracting delete and again it's blown out it's gonna be easy I think this one could be the one. Yeah. This one has the most visual interest here. Uh, we don't have the planes. We have a lot of seagulls kind of doing their thing. Um, let's remove the spot because this thing's bothering me. It's just staring me in the face. Cool. All right. This is going to need like one or two stops. Um, okay. That's too much. All right, this is going to be tricky. Hmm. Because we don't want to blow out the moon. It might not make it. Because the light was dead. Let me try to find the way to save this one from death. Because, like, my instinct is to just increase the exposure, which I obviously can. I just don't want to blow out that moon. And we want to create the mood around the moon, you know? So I don't want to fully... The challenge is, like, we don't have the sun peeking out anymore. So the sun's not illuminating anything else in our in our shot. And it's really... As frustrating as it is, this is... it's. I don't think I'm going to be able to save this, really. Because we don't have any light here. The luminance values are pretty, you know, washed out. It's very close to this. It looked better on the GoPro video than a shot here that we could edit, to be honest. It looked pretty. I don't think it's going to make it. Yeah, we're going to kill this one. All right, so that's, I mean, that's it. So we are left with, this This shot too is gone. So we're left with nine shots. <laughs> nine. You know, not terrible. Um, I really like some of these moody ones, man. Some of these ones are really moody. Like, damn, look at this. Like, see, that's why I wouldn't want to keep some of the other ones because you have a shot that's like that looks like this, where it's really, really moody, and you have, you know, these awesome clouds, and you have the light kissing the buildings like in a really, really awesome way. And you have this, which is just mood all day. Yeah, see, I, these are just stronger images to me. Even this one. Um, this one's more abstract. I don't hate this one. I like this one. I like the way the rays were kind of peeking. I like those light ray shots. So I think we're done. The next, actually eight shots, because this shot's no, no go. So eight shots. Sorry with 36. 
That's why we shoot digital. Now, e exporting time. So I have export settings. You won't be able, I don't think you'll be able to see this pop up if I show, let me see. If I go to export images and I export variant, yeah, you don't see this window. Yeah, you won't see this window. I, I could tell you the settings. So I have a I have an export folder that I choose. So I have one that's on my desktop that I export to. And that's where everything gets backed up to iCloud anyway. It's, it's on my desktop. I know that's not the smartest move, but I pay for extra iCloud storage on purpose. So those are the that's the folder I, I usually export to when I have to export. Um, and I want to get to, um, you know, sharing it online. I'll just I'll send it to myself. So I, I just use the image name. I don't abbreviate it or uh, I don't add a sequence name to it. So it's just the image name. If this was a sequence, what I would do is I would add a sequence to the number. So I would call it photo shoot and I would have a naming convention. So if you're shooting for a catalog or something and you need to number the sequences of images, I would absolutely recommend that. And I just choose the regular 100% quality JPEG, uh, 300 pixels per inch and scale at 100%. So I do the highest possible settings um, here. I want to make sure that, you know, they I do 300 uh, pixels per inch. It it's it could be higher for print, but depending on the size of print you want, that's usually a happy medium for me, depending on what I'm doing. So I've never printed larger than 24 by 36, and that should be fine, especially with these monochrome files. Um, usually 600 is a good one. Six, if you have like letters and things like text, 600 and higher is ideal. But I think for smaller prints, this will be fine. So I'm just sharing these online, honestly, and Facebook will crush this. So uh, Facebook and Instagram both. So these are fine. These are these make great wallpapers at these settings. So 100% JPEG, 100% quality, 300 pixels per inch export. So that's what I'm going to go through. I'm going to export all these. I'm going to highlight these, export these, and then I'm going to get these online. I'm going to send Ev the shot, and um, that's pretty much it. Next in line is a video vlog of these actual um, of the actual adventure shooting this. So I recorded everything with the GoPro Hero 9, which is my Christmas present and really amazing. So thanks to my wife for that. And uh, what I'm going to do is put together the video of me actually getting here and you'll see the behind the scenes similarly to how I had the first video where I had it mounted on a cold shoe mount on top of the camera, but just a little bit more of me in it. And um, you saw the edit to the shots. So I'm going to spray these shots throughout. And uh, I think these will make a good mix of shots throughout the actual video itself. So um, hoping that uh, you like that as well. So thanks for tuning in. I don't have anything else. This was a pretty, I don't know how long this is going for now, actually. Let's see. It's been going on for an hour and 18 minutes. So thanks for tuning in. This was awesome. This was a lot of fun. I'm going to keep doing these. I enjoy doing these. And if hopefully you got something out of this, uh, if you did, uh, hit, hit the like. I don't want to hit say hit the like and subscribe button. Everybody does that. If you liked it, it does help me. So definitely like this video, leave a comment, let me know how you'd like these videos to improve. And also let me know how the sound quality was this time, because hopefully it was a lot better than the first go ahead. But thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.